Hello there, my name is Bren Rodley. I'm a student at Quinnipiac University, and I learn best by teaching. So, as I'm about to have my criminal law final, I'm going to be teaching some things. I thought, well, if I'm going to be teaching some things, I may as well film them and make some videos. So, here's what we're going to be talking about. We're talking about felony murder. Now, felony murder is usually misunderstood. Uh, people think felony murder is the same as, well, any other kind of murder. It's always oh, so it's a felony, well, therefore, murder. What's the difference? Well, murder is, felony murder is different than first, second, or third degree murder, third degree murder being manslaughter, because felony murder requires no mens rea. Now, mens rea is what we call intent to a crime. So in order to have the correct, in order to be guilty of a crime, you have to have had the right amount of mens rea. Think of it this way. I have this water bottle. It is mine. But let's say this water bottle is your water bottle. But I think it's my water bottle. If I pick it up, I think it's my water bottle, and I walk away, I'm not guilty of robbery. But if I know this is your water bottle and I take it, knowing, knowingly, then I'm guilty of robbery. So that's the difference of mens rea. Felony murder requires no mens rea. Felony murder is murder that happens during the course of a felony. Because it happens during the course of a felony, it's automatically full level murder, not just manslaughter. Now these are felonies where a, somebody dying is a reasonable occurrence. So it's not a felony like mass tax fraud. It's a felony like assault. So I break down crimes. Usually we use the model penal code, but felony murder is not in the model penal code. I break down crimes in a three, um, three sets. Keep the conduct needed for the crime, the attendant circumstances around the crime, and the result. So let's go through it. The conduct for felony murder. The conduct for felony murder is simple. It's committing a felony. Now, usually this means a violent felony, but those things come in attendant circumstances, the type of felony. But the conduct, you're committing a felony. Nobody who's not committing nobody nobody who is not committing a felony will be convicted of felony murder. You have to have done the felony first. Alright, so then we have attendant circumstances. The attendant circumstances is that the felony has a high risk that somebody would die. It has a high risk that somebody would die. Um, it's likely that someone will die in the course of that felony. Easy example, somebody who is committing an armed robbery on a bank. When you, when you have your gun out, have people at the bank, and you say drop or I'll shoot you, and somebody then gets shot, that's committed within the course of the felony, and that's sort of almost expected when those felonies occur. So that's the attendant circumstance. The felony has to be one where Somebody dying is a reasonable result of the felony. And then the result, final result, is somebody dies. It's not felony murder if nobody dies. That's a, kind of a requirement. So that's the, that's the essentials of felony murder. It's a little bit um, controversial because sometimes it's a mistake. Sometimes I'm working with somebody else to rob a bank and that other person shoots a clerk and now I'm guilty of felony murder. It's very difficult. Felony murder is also different in different states. Different states have different laws. Some laws, some countries don't even recognize felony murder. Britain has um, not outlawed, outlawed it, but gotten rid of it. So it's an iffy thing, but it's something important to know about if you do it in law school. So stay tuned for the next episode where I go over another crime, probably.